Now we're time again, let's see what we've got this time. As usual, I have links down below for various items. If I can give you a link, I'll put it in there. Just make sure you check those out. What are these? Ah, right. Did you write surprisingly fast? These are rivets. Well, these M6x6 and then 4x4. So these are like punch rivets. So if you need to rivet two things together, you can just have a blind hole. And if you want a nice dome on it, you can actually just hammer the things and it will just pinch it together. It's heavy as like a pop riveter, which is the other alternative, obviously, you know, which have a little pin which pulls through and snaps off, which lasts okay, but those do tend to fail after a period of time, depending on what application you use them. So these are solid rivets. Also a medium expect. Different job. I thought I'd get some. There was something I wanted to use this for. Oh, I don't remember what it was now, but yeah. I've got some now. So these are some little USB hubs, apparently. Now, are they just charger splitters or are they actually hubs? This also turns. So this pivots. So you can adjust your orientation, that's nice. Now what I got these for is my scopes and stuff like that because they've only got limited number of USB ports on them. And sometimes you want to have a keyboard and a mouse and a USB flash drive, all those sorts of things all plugged in at once. Now my Sigon SDS 2104X Plus is actually okay. I've got all the ports are full up on that, but it's okay. My SSA3021X, on the other hand, X Plus, it's only got one USB port on it and that's got something in it. So if I want to plug in a USB keyboard or a wireless keyboard or mouse, make the interface easy to use, I can't use the flash drive. I have to have either the flash drive or the USB dongle. So I'm hoping I can use this, or maybe the white one, to actually have both have the flash drive and a USB keyboard slash mouse used on it as well, so I can use both at once. So I'm actually going to plug one of these in and try it out and see if it works. Let's plug this in. So I've got my SSA 3021X Plus. Let's plug the hub in. It's got a USB flash drive already installed on it, and the flash drive pops up over here. That's a good sign. So let's plug in the wireless unit for the mouse. Let's plug that in as well. So I've got an idea if this is even going to work. It may not even work. Turn the mouse on, and we have a mouse cursor. Oh, brilliant. I can use both at once. Look at that. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. Perfect. Little mini USB hub. It's got three ports on it. Brilliant for this. Well, I might use a white one. I don't know which one. Maybe. Either one works. So that's great. It means I don't have to worry about trying to swap it over. So the file over here. That brings up the stuff here. Great. That means I can access the drive. The disk is recognised. That's brilliant. Happy with that. It works. Excellent. Now the next thing here, I've already opened up because I needed to use what's in it. These are some one millimeter welding rods, smiled steel. The 6013 or something. Yeah, 6013. Yeah, I bought 50 of them. I've already used 30 of them. Now these really thin ones, these are obviously arc welding or stick welding, whatever you want to call it. These really thin ones are really good for rebuilding really thin like sheet steel like little brackets or thin sheet metal because then you can use a much lower current you know, in order to melt the electrode and then you can weld much thinner steel without burning holes through it it just makes it a lot easier I was using these and I also used my MIG welder as well and my MIG welder was actually doing a slightly better job between these and the MIG welder so I mean I'm not a welder right? I'm, I've got the gear and as Chris would say I've got no idea hey Chris so <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've got the gear, I can use it, I'm not a good welder, I can make bits of metal stick together, and I can grind it, and re-weld it, and grind it, and re-weld it, and get a nice looking joint, but I'm not a welder, it's not what I do. I was finding that the MIG welding was going slightly better than using stick welds of these. I mean, these were doing it, but I'd, um, I tried between these and the MIG welder, and the MIG welder's slightly thinner, because that's 0.8mm, the wire on that, and so I did a slightly better job, but it takes a bit more effort, but you sort of do off and on, off and on, off and on, that thing, so you can also avoid burning holes through using that method, whereas these are a bit harder to stop start. Once these things are going, you want to keep going basically, but that tends to burn holes through. So I've actually ordered some more of these because I've only got 20 left now. If I don't use 30 in one job, I've ordered some more. So I'm going to have a stock of them. Brilliant. It's a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Yes, I did manage to find one. Yes, it was expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how these little Raspberry Pis come out as being cheap educational type things for getting people into doing projects and you know learning about computing and that sort of stuff and programming and you know, so it all came about, wasn't it? It's cheap. These things were like thirty dollars originally, something like that, was it? They were not expensive. Now 
I paid $100 for this thing. They're not cheap anymore. You can buy a real computer now for these. In some cases you can buy, you know, obviously a used one, but something more powerful for the same money. But this is what I need, it's something this size and standalone, single use, no screen needed, headless sort of situation, potentially anyway so. I've already got, I think one spare, this is my second spare, but I've got a project in mind for this. In fact it will have a screen on it. It's something I'm going to play with probably, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to do it yet, and I may do a video about it. It's using this as a Victron display to do with solar charging equipment in the motorhome. The plan is to have a display of what's going on with the solar system. Because right now I don't have a display, because when I changed the solar system from an EP Ever type solar charge controller, which had a display and stuff on it, seeing what the solar panels are doing. Now the only way for me to see what's going on is to actually log into the solar charge controller on Bluetooth with my phone to see what's going on with that. It's a bit more cumbersome, I can't just glance at it and see what's happening, which is really convenient. You can get a Serbo GX from Victron, hundreds of dollars, but you can make your own using Raspberry Pi and a screen and download some software for a fraction of the cost. It makes sense for me to have a go, and I like to tinker with things and have projects. So that's part of that. Why do I always cut things lengthways instead of on the end? Wouldn't it be easier to cut it through the end? I always do it that way. Oh, <laughs> and I was telling you about the Raspberry Pi project. 5.5 inch LCD, which supposedly will work on the Raspberry Pi. Some cables and stuff. Here we go. Nice little screen. Uses HDMI and it's got USB as well. It's a touch screen. So I was thinking I could actually use this as a display with that Raspberry Pi there to create that solar charge controller monitor. It's got like a backlight button there too. Just there. So exactly how I'd actually hook this up and mount it and all that sort of stuff, I don't know yet. I'd probably have to be like a 3D printer case for it or something. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet. But either way, it's a little HDMI screen, so that should be pretty cool. And so we've got cables in there, USB cable, HDMI data thing there. It's also got a bracket that you can make up. That's good. Now I've got the stuff I think to do that project. I've already downloaded the software. It's the Venus OS, the software is called, from Victron. So, anyway, that's the plan. Again, don't forget to check out the links down below for various things. And also, thank you very much for my Patreon supporters and my YouTube members. To help to subsidise the channel a little bit, offset some of my costs, and allow me to buy things to do videos about, such as these things. And obviously Broken Test Gear. Broken Test Gear is the thing I really want to get hold of, but the prices and that is getting ridiculous now. It's getting really hard to buy things for original price, which is why I'm struggling to do test gear repair stuff, because trying to buy stuff at the right price to make it worth doing is being hard. So this is PB Tech, so we've got some superficial packaging on the top, and it's just sitting on the bottom of the box. Not really protected, not really stuff full. It's PB Tech. Anyway, these... Are some quick charge chargers. Now I've shown some very much like this before which I got from AliExpress and I've got one which I use in my bedroom there to charge my phone. It works fine. I've been using that for what, about maybe a year now, something like that. And it's been good. I've had no problems with it. It's been great. It does power delivery three and that sort of stuff. But when to go and buy another one or another couple because I like to have spares. I always like to have spares. Spares. And can't get them anymore. It's like, well, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find exactly the same one anymore. It's just gone. Supplier didn't have them. I looked around, I couldn't find exactly the same one. The other ones I could find were locally, which look exactly the same. These were considerably more expensive. So there might be links for these. I think these are like $30 each. I think I paid something like 20 or $15 each originally for the first one. I don't remember. Well, these $40 locally, something like that. Anyway, there's much more expensive locally. It's like, well, I know these are decent quality chargers, so I got some anyway, because sometimes you just need a good quality charger, which you can trust and rely on. When you get chargers from AliExpress, it's always a bit of a gamble. Are you going to get one which is going to be good? Are you going to get one which is basically a capacitive dropper with a Zener diode in it? And almost no smoothing and electrically dangerous, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's tricky trying to find stuff you can trust. It's always a gamble in AliExpress. If I can find links again, I'll have another look. If I can find links again to these type of AliExpress, because it is a good charger, then um, you know I've got this name, I'll, I'll find it by that name now. I'll put a link down below if I can find one. So, thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Patreon support link over there if you want to help support me on Patreon. And other videos to watch down below in the description or on the screen. Catch you later.